I just, I just don't know. Like, why? Fourth graders, I feel like I should show you this because it's in our book today, but you guys need to prepare yourself. It's really weird. It's kind of gross. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Okay, just be ready. It's happening. Okay, look at it. Look at that frog. It's got an extra leg. Look at it. Ugh. I can't. I can't. It's too much. Okay. I gotta, I gotta suck it up. All right. Whew. Get that out of here. So today, hello, fourth graders. My name is Mrs. Lawson, and I'm scared of some animals, but it's okay. We'll work through it together. So today, we are reading a new story called Fragile Frogs. And even though that's kind of gross, this story is really, really interesting because unlike Mary Anning and unlike Porpoises in Peril, Fragile Frogs, we learn about what is going on with these frogs. So we'll maybe learn why that frog looks like that. Kind of crazy. So our learning intention. What are we learning today? We're gonna learn to determine the main ideas of the text and explain how the key details support the main idea. We will know we are successful when we can define the main idea in supporting details, identify the main idea of the text, and identify supporting details. And now for your foundational skill today, you are going to be reading a short text called Police Academy. It's gonna be on Seesaw. And for that, you'll just read it like you've been doing. You're gonna record yourself and then you will listen to it. And a good reader, you're gonna look for your strengths and your weaknesses. Where can you grow? Where can you get better? Make sure you're really focusing on those O-R-E-R -E words and decoding them and getting them correct while you're reading. Our vocabulary today. So the title of this book is Fragile frogs. So if you don't know what fragile means, I mean, it's going to be hard to understand what are we going to be learning about today. So when I think of fragile, I think of a box like I get in the mail. Yesterday I got this box and it said fragile, handle with care. And I'm like, what in the world is in this box? So when I picked up the box, my mom yelled at me to be careful because it was fragile. So I looked inside and it was a candle. So why would I need to be careful with a candle? What could happen to the candle? So what does fragile mean? Fragile means it's easily broken or damaged. So that means these frogs that we're gonna learn about, something is easily going to damage them or something's going on there. An amphibian. All right, we got this picture of a frog. What could that mean? There seem to be fewer amphibians, frogs, toads, salamanders, and Sicilians. So all of those animals are amphibians. What is special about an amphibian? Do you guys know? I kind of forget this sometimes, but amphibians are animals that can live both on land and in water. Pretty cool. Next one, we have extinction. So I put this picture of dinosaurs up there because the dinosaurs are extinct. Then I put this from the text, it says, they discovered that about a third of amphibians are threatened with extinction. So what does it mean? What does extinction mean? Extinction is when an animal or plant species has no living members. So those dinosaurs, all of them are dead. So that means they're extinct. So I'm gonna challenge you today, as always, I want you to write a sentence with the word fragile, with the word extinction, and with the word amphibian. I know you can do it, fourth graders. You are rocking it. Now to our story. And it says here, we've got some vocab words, and over here it doesn't have a stop sign, so we're not gonna stop and discuss it, but start thinking, how do we learn about the problem from the first few paragraphs? So maybe, if I get interested, maybe we'll stop and talk about it. Who knows, Miss Lawson's a little crazy, you never know what she's gonna do. All right. Amphibian scientists are like everybody else. They like to talk about what they do. At an international conference in 1989, nearly everyone was telling the same story. They seemed to be, there seemed to be fewer amphibians, 
frogs, toads, salamanders, and Sicilians. Each scientist thought it was happening just to the animals he or she studied. But when the scientists talked to one another, they realized it was happening everywhere. Concerned scientists surveyed amphibian populations all over the world. They discovered that about a third of amphibians, 1,856 out of 5,743 species, are threatened with extinction. Since 1980, at least 122 species have probably become extinct. Oh my gosh, that's insane. So that's the first few paragraphs. So let's pause the video for a second and think. What did you learn about the problem so far? So far, I have learned what it says here. There seems to be fewer amphibians. Like something is happening to these amphibians to make them die. And it says even here, it's happening all around the world. It's not just in one spot. So that's kind of crazy. Australia had a remarkable species called the gastric brooding frog. The mother frog swallowed her eggs and hatched her babies in her stomach. What? The little frogs hopped from their mother's mouth into the big wide world. During the 1980s, the Australian gastric brooding frogs disappeared. That's kind of sad. So it says down here, amphibian means double life. Most amphibians begin their life in a watery world, breathing through fish-like gills. Then they transform into an entirely different creature, an air-breathing animal. We got some pictures of different frogs over here. All right. Something similar has happened in Costa Rica. Golden toads once lived in Costa Rica's cool, wet forests. The males of the two inch long species were golden orange, like web footed tangerines. They gathered by the hundreds during breeding season. The golden toad was last seen in 1989. Like the gastric brooding frog, the golden toad is now considered extinct. No one knows what killed the gastric brooding frogs or the golden toads. Habitat loss is a big problem for many wild animals, including amphibians. Frogs, toads, and salamanders die when wetlands are drained, ponds are filled, or forests are cut down. Sometimes amphibian habitat is fragmented, chopped into small pieces when roads, houses, or shopping centers are built. Imagine a tiny frog trying to hop safely across a freeway or parking lot. Scientists looked closely at places where amphibians were declining. To their surprise, they found it was always where habitat was being lost or fragmented. Frogs were disappearing from protected areas or places very far from humans. Okay, hold on. To their surprise, they found it wasn't. See, as a reader, you have to like read and realize that didn't make sense. So to their surprise, they found it wasn't where their habitats were being lost and fragmented. Frogs were disappearing from protected areas or places very far from humans. Costa Rica's golden toad lived in a national park. The gastric brooding frog lived in remote parts of Australia. So let's look at these descriptions above. So in this picture up here, this red-legged walking frog from Africa looks like he's wearing tiger-striped underwear. Walking frogs take steps with their hind legs instead of hopping. And then on the right, the only golden toads left are museum specimens like this one. This species is believed to be extinct. Oh my gosh, this picture cracks me up every time. Look at this guy, he is just chilling. And this is a Sonor Sonoran desert toad. He looks pretty happy. All right, so we have a stop sign. So whenever we get to these fourth graders, we always stop and read the question because I like to know what I'm looking for in this page. It says, describe how the author talks about deformed frogs. So right here, this frog is deformed, which means it's different than what it's supposed to look like. Why does the author include these paragraphs? 
So up here it says, deformed frogs appeared too. In 1995, middle school students in Minnesota found some frogs near a farm. They were juvenile leopard frogs found, found ugh, leopard frogs just like the ones Tyrone, stu Tyrone studies. So we gotta follow this asterisk down here. Dr. Tyrone Hayes is the biologic, biologist discussed in the trade book, The Frog Scientist. See the complete work for more information. Many of the Minnesota frogs had missing legs or shriveled legs or legs that didn't bend. It was strange and scary. People began finding deformed frogs in many other places too. What is happening to the world's amphibians? So pause right here. Why do you think the author added that paragraph about deformed frogs when we're mostly worried about extinct frogs? So we know the main idea so far of this text, hopefully you figured out, is about something's happening to the frog population, right? Well, this supports that because something is affecting them. It's not killing these frogs, but it is messing with like how they're formed. So it's not just killing them, it's also messing with what makes them. The answer isn't simple. Amphibians, amphibian decline has many causes. Since the 1980s, the kit, kitrid, so I, I'm looking at this. I can't tell if that's an R. Yep. The chytrid fungus was spread across the world. So if you guys didn't know, these help us pronounce it. So I looked at this. It looked like chytrid. Chytrid. So this word is chytrid. The disease is killing amphibians in North America, Central America, South America, and Australia. To make matters worse, global warming seems to, seems to cause temperatures that help the fungus so we're going to stop and read about all these different frogs. So on the left, this blue poison dart frog lives in South Africa. Below, this leopard frog was caught by a child in Reedsburg, Wisconsin. It has an extra leg growing out of its chin. Other deformed frogs were found in the same place. So a deadly fungus that threatens frogs was first discovered in the blue poison dart frog above and white tree frog shown on page nine. So it's gonna be on the next page. So it says, to make matters worse, global warming seems to cause temperatures that help the fungus. Oh, we don't get to keep reading. I'm so interested. I wanna know what is happening to these frogs. We kind of started getting an answer. So that's cool. All right, so on page five and six, how does the author provide details about the main idea? What details and examples does the author give to support the idea that the problem exists all around the world? So this question actually gives you the main idea that we're focusing on today. Can you catch what the main idea is? It says, what details and examples does the author give to support the idea that the problem exists all over the world. So the main idea is actually amphibians are close to extinction all over the world. So I'm gonna give you a second to get that drawn. I know you've done one of these charts with Miss Wagers already. So this is your main idea. And then today we're just gonna look back in the text and we're gonna try and find two supporting details. So when we go back, Let's sneak back into the text. What are two things we can find to support that it's happening all over the world? And it tells us to really focus on pages five and page six. So let's stop here. I'm gonna give you a second to kind of look over page five and see if you can find anything that sticks out to you. All right, so I'm gonna look at this page too because I started noticing, I hope you did too, that down here it talks about Australia. So that's one part of the world. It has a remarkable species called the gastric brooding frog. And that frog has disappeared. So that's one part of the world. And then it says something similar happened in Costa Rica. So that's two different examples from two different parts of the world. So that's the first thing that I would write down. Then let's go back. Let's show you where that is. 
So I would say the extinct species are from Australia and Costa Rica. So that shows me that it's happening in more than one page, in more than one place. So you can pause the video here if you need time to write that down, but we're gonna go hop back into the text. And it says, let's look at page six. Habitat loss is a big problem. Scientists look closely at places where amphibian were declining. We figured out it wasn't just in remote areas. Ooh, right here, ding, ding, ding. So I'm gonna pause the video, see if you can figure it out. All right, fourth graders, I hope that you found that the disease is killing amphibians in North America, Central America, South America, and Australia. So this disease, this chytrid fungus, that's all over the world. So that shows us there's a fungus that is killing amphibians in North America, Central America, South America, and Australia. So it's happening everywhere. It's not just in one place. Great job looking back at the text, finding that main idea from the question, and getting those two supporting details from the text. You guys did an amazing job. Now it's your turn. So if we look at what I have on this page here, it says, what is the important idea the author is trying to communicate? What details support the main idea? So I have a little section from the text to make it easier because you're gonna have to find the main idea and two supporting details on this page. So when you find the main idea of this paragraph, you're gonna put it here and then you're gonna do two supporting details. I know that you guys can do this. Again, I am giving you one of the harder questions to do without us because I know that you can do it, fourth graders. You guys are so smart and so capable. So stretch that brain of yours, work super hard, and you got this. Have a great rest of your day, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys.